For episode three of Striking From Home is a 15-time PBA titleist, including two majors and the 2020 PBA Summer Clash. He is also the only bowler officially recognized by the PBA to shoot 300 twice on television, Sean Rash. How's it going, Sean? Good evening. How you doing, man? Happy to be here today and looking forward to uh, this next 30 minutes or so. Absolutely. And I want to say huge congrats on another child to the Rash family. Uh, definitely outnumbered by females in your camp, uh, as you said on Twitter. Uh, but I guess I, I bet that's a huge blessing for you. Yeah, definitely outnumbered, number one. Uh, super blessed and thankful that uh, Elena Ray came into the world last Monday, June 29th. Uh, happy and healthy. Uh, glad that the wife, my Sarah, is doing well as, you know, as can be. Um, but uh, super blessed, super outnumbered, happy to be living with four girls and a uh, little boy, our little dog, uh, Dexter. Yeah, that's awesome. So I have some questions for you, so we can kind of jump into that now. Uh, so how do you see your newest addition to the family uh, affecting your PBA tour life at all? Well, right now with not a whole lot going on, it's uh, not affecting a whole lot. But because the PBA returns to action next weekend, with the PBA Tour Finals and the PBA King of the Lanes uh, down in Jupiter, Florida, it was actually nice to have the baby early. The baby was actually due July 7th. Uh, mm -hmm. She decided to come eight, nine days early. It gives me a, a chance to do a few more things around the house, get a couple more days of practice in. But uh, just extremely grateful to be home lately. I've uh, been home a lot. It's been nice to see my girls grow up, see them every day, play with them outside, do things in the house and realistically try to do anything I can to help my wife out. Um, but it always seems like there's something else to do, not just for the wife, but for the kids, you know, fixing breakfast or lunch or dinner, uh, cleaning bathrooms and laundry and everything else. It, there's a lot on the plate. So it's kind of nice to not have a whole lot going on with the, the competitive bowling world right now. Yeah, absolutely. Very well said. Um, and speaking of the bowling world coming back, uh, it was very recently announced, extremely recently announced, that the PBA League is taking place in late September. Uh, hopefully, anyways, we're gonna we're gonna hope on that. So uh, I want to know, how do you feel about being part of a brand new PBA League team, the Bruce City Bulls? Yeah, so you know the PBA just announced two new teams. They did their draft uh, July seventh. The Miami Waves and Phoenix Fury with the ten women uh, announced the dates of September twenty seventh and twenty eighth in Portland, Maine at Bayside Bowl and, you know, talk to Coley and Tom and, and Charlie and everybody and everyone's excited and hopeful that this will take place. Um, Maine has seen a decrease in cases and numbers. Uh, businesses are starting to open up and be at, you know, a different capacity than a couple months ago when we were supposed to be there um, and everything else. So really hopeful, like everyone else is, that uh, we'll be in Portland, Maine at the end of September with all of our great fans in Portland at Bayside, and we'll see what takes place. Um, you know, the biggest thing that the PVA is going to do, and, and so is Charlie and Bayside and the bowlers, are you know make sure everybody's safe, uh, take care of one another, and wear masks and prevent any opportunities that uh, won't happen. So uh, we're we're looking forward to September 27th and 28th. Absolutely, and you know, you kind of alluded to this a little bit when you were speaking. Uh, you know, we've had that long break from uh, the true PBA Tour action, although, of course, you know, uh, uh, we've had the two events, one of which you were fortunate enough to win uh, over the summer. But how do you think that this, um, this break that the PBA Tour has been given is going to affect your mental game? Uh, I don't think it's going to affect it a whole lot, to be honest. You know, you go into an event thinking that you can win, um, hopefully sharp enough. Uh, honestly, I have not practiced a whole lot. Uh, threw my back out during, during a workout last week uh, with my kids. Uh, so I've been icing and trying to heal up and recover that way. Um, but there's so many other things going on. So bowling, it's like riding a bike though. Uh, I'm not a big practicer. So 
I only practice for 20, 30 minutes at a time anyways. I'll get on the lanes quite a bit here uh, two weeks prior to the event. Um, you know, you can't win the event on the first day anyway. Guaranteed to step ladder on the second day and hopefully sharp enough to, uh, to run the ladder if I'm not in the top seed already. And, you know, and just enjoy the moment. Enjoy being there, being on television, uh, representing the companies I represent. And, and you know, we're doing, we're doing some bowling, so we're going to be happy with that. Absolutely. So now to change subject just slightly, everyone wants to know the answer to this. Uh, after the break is over, do you plan on trying any urethane balls, or are they just going to stay in the bag? Yeah, urethane stays in the bag quite a bit. Um, right before the plant closed down in, in San Antonio, Global came out with the Booyah Pro, uh, which is a, like a pearlized version of a urethane ball, and it's the finally one that I really like. It also has some reactive resin into it, so it's kind of like a blend, kind of like the 70-30 infused. Um, okay. And I've been able to throw it quite a bit. Your thing's meant to, uh, we just won't even get going into it. It just, I don't throw it a whole lot. Uh, if it calls for it, I'll throw it. You know, I'm not a fan of it. It's part of the game now, though. And uh, well, like I said, when it calls for it, I'll throw it if I need to. Yes, absolutely. Very well said again. You know, uh, I now, of course, everyone knows I do love your thing. I am, I am all about it. That's me, you know, but very different personality, very different way of seeing the lane. And I definitely respect the ability to see the lane and not have a need or even a want for your thing these days because it happens to be a trend that a lot of people are, are kind of falling towards and myself included, not going to lie. But, uh, you know, it is, it is awesome to see that, that there is definitely life out there for uh, having a perspective that you can see the lane not using your thing and definitely knowing it's not always the, the must-have option. Yeah, it's just, uh, like I said, everyone sees the lane differently, like you said there, um, front to back or side to side. I feel like I can use my tricks uh, to get a strong ASIM or a symmetric ball to see the lane the right way, or even on a, on a weaker side and stand left and throw it at the gutter, depending on, because your thing is mostly used on shorter patterns. Um, now you get to the middle patterns. They, they're used quite a bit too during match play, but because it keeps the lane simple and guys don't have to make big drastic moves pair to pair across the building. So, but uh, again, until I really need to use it, I probably won't. And shout out to a video that I made on my channel. You can check it out on the top right. Uh, it is how to effectively throw urethane from my perspective. Anyways, so I made a video about that, a little guide to it. You can check that out. Uh, so now, what's that? All right, maybe I will. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, I, um, I have a mini game plan for you. So the way that I do mini games in this series are based on your PBA league team. And as we know, you're a part of a brand new team this year, the Brew City Ballers. So uh, I have some trivia questions based on the Brew City Ballers, uh, which happens to be of Milwaukee. And so I have some Milwaukee related trivia for you. So are you ready? This will be interesting. Uh, I've been to Milwaukee a few times, so I'm not sure I'm going to know a whole lot about Milwaukee. Well, a lot of this happens to be bowling related as well, or some of it anyways. Uh, okay. A few questions. So maybe, maybe you might know. So let's dive in. So, and I guarantee you, you'll probably do better than Josh Blanchard because he only got two points out of the five uh, for Motown trivia. He did not, uh, he didn't do very well. <laughs> All righty. So, uh, question number one, let's see how you do. All right, so the Holler House, located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, is the oldest sanctioned bowling alley in the United States. What year did the Holler House open in? And I'll give you some multiple choice to help you out. So A is 1910, B is 1908, C is 1899, and D is 1912. Uh, I'm going to go with 1899. Unfortunately, that is incorrect. It was B, 1908. All right. So a couple years off there. Definitely an old bowling alley. I'll definitely it say is. that. Boy, yes. two lanes, too, I believe, right? Yes, yep. And they just had their first ever 300 bowled there, uh, like maybe at the beginning of this year, I believe. Yeah, by the owner's son or grandson or something. I remember yes. about that. Yeah. All right. So question number two. Hopefully you can get some momentum here. So, although it is now Madison, Wisconsin, 
What was the first ever capital city of the state of Wisconsin? Was it A? <laughs> was it A, Green Bay? Was it B, Milwaukee, C, Kenosha, or D, Belmont? I have no idea. Uh, this might be a little misleading. Let's go with Milwaukee. That's why it was misleading. It's not Milwaukee, as you might think. I tricked you there. Uh, it's D, Belmont. That's the only one that's not, that has like nothing to do with Milwaukee, I promise. <laughs> Uh, but yes, Belmont was the original capital of Wisconsin, which I did not know prior to Googling that. <laughs> All right, so question number three for you, Sean. What is Milwaukee's official nickname? Is it A, Cream City, B, Brew City, C, Cheese Curd City, or D, Pub City? I'm going to guess that it's not Brew City since uh, it's – it was misleading the second time. I'm going to go with Pub City. It is a cream city. <laughs> I might not get a single one right here. All right. Uh, not, a lot of, uh, not a lot of momentum on your side right now. Let's see if uh, let's see if you can pick things up with number four, though, all right? I think, all right. I, think you can, I think you can try here. I think you got this one. So what year was the first ever PBA event held in Wisconsin? Was it A, 1965, B, 1986, C, 1970, or D, 1971? Uh, we'll go 1970. It was 1965 with the PBA Madison Open. Oh, man. <laughs> Not doing too hot here. Come on. Yeah. We, got, we got one more question for you. One more. You got this. Okay. All right. Let's see if you can do this. Which of the following major beer companies has its primary headquarters located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin? Is it A, Anheuser-Busch, B, Coors, C, Heineken, or D, Miller? We're going to go with – it's not A or B. What was C and D? C is Heineken and D is Miller. All right, we'll go with C, Heineken. Oh, man, Heineken's international. Know. It's D, Miller. Oh, you almost had it. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, sorry, not really. Sean. That's zero points for Sean. Yeah. Well, I knew it wasn't Coors because they're in Colorado. And as we yes. went to St. Louis, uh, man, I would swear it was Heineken. Miller is Chicago, I thought. But Chicago, Milwaukee, they're close enough. Yep, uh, the, the Miller main headquarters. Coors. Yeah, Miller Coors has a headquarters here in Chicago. So, see, it's kind of bleeding there. Well, the, the primary headquarters for Miller is, is Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> but better look into some things in Milwaukee. Uh, we'll visit there quite a bit over the next couple of years. Hopefully the PBA League will actually visit there for some home games. But, uh, yeah, I've had some great moments, though, in Milwaukee. Absolutely, yes. You know, uh, I believe it was the, the World Series of Bowling, correct me if I'm wrong, that was in Milwaukee uh, years we ago. We had a summer spring in Milwaukee. Uh, I didn't bowl great there, but I did win my first major at Miller Park in 2007. Uh, the second time it was at Miller Park. Danny Wiseman won the first time there in 2004, I believe. So some good memories there, and uh, hopefully have many more in the future. Just uh, just a slight uh, heads up, you said Miller Park. Uh, Miller is the uh, headquarters. In yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just happened to catch that, but yes, so um, I, uh, a little bit shorter of an episode. I think it's very well, uh, we're very well statured having Sean Rash on the Striking From Home, uh, and I really appreciate you joining me, Sean. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, just uh, thanks for asking me to jump on, you know, short notice. Glad I could fill in. Uh, great stuff that you're doing. Hopefully you keep up with it. You know, PBA is going to be back next weekend on Fox Sports 1 and uh, CBS Sports Network as well with two different events. 12, 13 of the best bowlers, a couple of women, a couple of the seniors. Going to be a lot of action coming up. And then, uh, you know, the PBA League into September. So a lot of stuff coming up. Glad to be home, though, to, to watch my baby girl grow up and my other two girls as well. And, uh, you know, we'll get back to somewhat normalcy here soon. But for now, it's nice to be home. Absolutely. All righty. Well, this is Daniel signing off and catch me next week for the next episode. Thanks again to Sean Ash for joining me and have a great one, everybody. All right. See you.